Now, from reading the title, you'll know that this video is about the outbound side of a voice AI. And I do have to say that deploying this technology is a lot more difficult for outbound than it is inbound for the simple reason that prospects are even less receptive to an AI more so than they already are to a human salesperson. This doesn't mean, however, that the outbound side of voice AI is useless. In fact, the opposite of that is true. You simply need to implement it in the right way where value is brought to the business and to the customer. So how exactly can we use voice AI to create that win-win situation? And what specific use cases make the outbound voice AI systems truly valuable? In this video, I'll show you an example of an outbound voice AI system that does just that. We'll look at how it works, how I built it, why it's effective, and how it benefits both the customer and the business. By the end, you'll have a clear idea of how voice AI can be a powerful tool for outbound calls when implemented correctly. Okay, so in order to build an effective outbound voice AI system, this is the structure most of them hold. There will be some sort of a trigger which causes the automation to run and get some sort of data, which would have to be the phone number we're calling, you know, maybe their first name, whatever, whatever the data about them is so that these calls are personalized. Then we basically trigger the transient agent to actually dial up that number and give them a ring. Okay, so the demo I've built today is for a healthcare company. And the way that this is structured is 24 hours before an appointment, it triggers. Then we basically check our database, which we are using Airtable for, to get the full name, the date of birth, the appointment date and time. And then we use VAPI, which is a voice AI infrastructure in order to ring that person that has an appointment in 24 hours. And so for this trigger, we are using a scheduling software called cow.com, which basically is like a Calendly, but um, free. And then we are using that database. And then within that database, there'll be a value called time left, which basically tells us how many hours do we have left until the appointment. And then basically if that time left value is less than 24, then we will cause it to be triggered. And then all of this is tied together in make.com in order to connect all these APIs and all this logic. So the benefits of a system like this are pretty simple. Your business benefits are reduced no-show rates. Obviously people are getting reminded right before their appointment that they have one. It's a personalized interaction as we're getting the data from the database and we have cost-effective communication. You know, these voice AI systems aren't expensive whatsoever. It is scalable, no matter how many people this voice AI system has to call, it will be able to do it. And it is automated and therefore reliable. Since we're gonna automate it once, there can't really be any problems with the system unless, I don't know, our database has false numbers on it, like fake numbers. That is really the only way there could be an error. Now the benefits for the customers are there are gonna be a reduced wait times as obviously the healthcare company will be able to be much more efficient and much more streamlined with these outbound voice AI systems as the customers are getting reminded. Then you have the option to reschedule. So let's say this voice system calls them, says, you know, are you able to do this? And they say no, then they can, then the system can basically be like, okay, when would suit you? Like, what's a good time for you? And then it will check the calendar to be like, okay, that works. If it doesn't work, um, then it will be like, okay, can you do this day, whatever. And then the last benefit for the customer is avoid missed appointment fees. So let's say that healthcare company has some sort of fee. If you miss the appointment, you know, you know you're gonna get a call 24 hours before and that gives you the option to reschedule if you don't think you're gonna make that time. And if you do think you can make that time, you know you're being reminded and therefore you're gonna be less likely to miss it. Okay, so this is the scheduling software I was talking about. It is cow.com and we are just on a demo event over here. It's only three minutes long because I basically wanted the option to choose a bunch of different times because I obviously wanna schedule this time and event in, you know, almost 24 hours away or just over so that during this demo, you know, we actually get called by this agent and then we can, you know, show the um, success, I guess, of this system. So I'm gonna schedule, the time is 14.45, so I'm gonna schedule it for 14.57, 12 minutes ahead, and we're gonna press confirm. Now, what's happening in the back end is this scenario just ran. Uh, basically, this booking created was triggered, all of this data was sent, and then we created a record in our database, which was pretty simple, you know, our name, the email, when was it scheduled? So as you can see, 25th July, 1457. And then we can go into our database and look over here. Boom, as you can see, 1457 scheduled, uh, 
um, assigned to the same email because it's myself, if that makes sense. And then here is the magic of our database. We have this time left formula, which basically checks the date difference between you know now and the date scheduled. So the next automation that will run in nine minutes is this one over here, which is the one that basically searches a record and check using the formula, are there any like records that have time left that have the time left variable as 24 or less and their status equals scheduled. So the reason why we check if the status is scheduled is because we have this called part and we don't want it calling, you know, the same number over and over again, 15 minutes. We basically want to make sure, you know, once it's called, it's called. And if it's scheduled, you know, then it's going to be called once it hits 24. Then we take that record and basically use the email that we get from that record, which would be the record in appointments. And we match that email to the email in the users database over here. And we basically grab that phone number, um, which I'm gonna have to blur. And we grab the date of birth and we grab the name. And then we use that in order to make the API call, which is the create call API in VAPI. And then we pass in this whole body, which basically creates the call and we give it, you know, the information like the name, the date, the date of birth, you know, the date today is now, um, et cetera. And then once we've done that, we basically update that record. And what we do is we simply change the status from um, scheduled to called. Simple as that. So we still have five minutes to wait before this time left variable for myself will turn into 24. So right now we won't be getting called. So what I'll do is just quickly explain this crate call API. So you're just gonna have to fill out the body and it is all kind of self-explanatory. Once you get used to the API, you'll understand this. So the name, it has also the information of what it actually means. So this is the name of the call. Um, I'm not using the assist. I'm not using an assistant ID because, like I said, we're making this assistant a transient assistant, which basically means that you know this assistant is created during the call and obviously deleted after the call because it's not being stored. The transcriber I'm using is DeepGram Nova 2 Language English, um, which we can see over here. Then we have the OpenAI model, which I've just chosen over there. And then you can pass in your system prompt. So you just create the content, add it, and then the role system. I don't need any tools. The provider I'm using is OpenAI. The model I'm using is GPT-40 Mini. And then I have a fallback model of GPT-40. The temperature I have is 0 0.2. I just quickly changed that because it shouldn't have been zero like it was for some reason. And then we can move on to the voice. So the voice I'm using is Cartesia. And then this is the voice ID I'm using. Then I added the name of the assistant. So again, I made it Olivia. And then the first message it said was just, hello, is this, you know, the name? So it looks something like that because that is our variable for name in make.com. Then the voicemail uh, detection is just Twilio. A few things need to be done in this phone number section. You need to add your phone. You need to add your phone number ID, which is found in the dashboard of VAPI and you need to chuck that in there. Then you can also add a fallback destination where you add your Twilio phone number over here, your account SID, your auth token, and then that is really it. And then in the customer section, you just add the number, etc. It is a little bit annoying and complicated for this kind of crate call API, but just play around in this VAPI API reference and you will get to grip of how to create it. The time, is 1458 so as you can see the time left is 24 and this scenario runs every 15 minutes so it hasn't run yet and i have it turned off because i need to take my phone so now if i run this scenario it will call me so let me take out my phone switch to my normal camera so i'm waiting on my phone right now and i'm gonna run this scenario so let's see what we get okay so we wait there we go. As you can see, our call is coming in. Let me answer this. So let me put on speaker. Hi there. Am I speaking with Hugo Podworski? Yes. Yes, you are. Great. This is Zoe, your AI voice assistant from your healthcare provider. I'm calling to remind you about your upcoming appointment. Can you please confirm your date of birth for me? Yeah, my date of birth is 19th of July, 2005. 
Thank you, Hugo. I have you scheduled for an appointment on July 25th, 2024, at 1.57 p.m. Do you have any questions about this appointment? Yeah, is that 1.57 um, British Standard Time or is that UTC? Uh-huh. That's a great question. Hugo, the appointment is scheduled for 1.57 p.m. British Standard Time. Also, please remember to bring any necessary documents or identification with you guys. Is there anything else you would like to know? Nope, that's it. Perfect. If for any reason you need to reschedule, just let us know. Yeah, Otherwise, perfect. Thank you. you. Okay, so as you can see, we got the call. Um, obviously, it didn't run automatically because I didn't have this thing on. But it would basically just check. This scenario would check every 15 minutes to see whether the there is a new basically appointment to remind and then it will ring that person automatically. So yeah, that's really it for the video. As you saw, we built a system that triggers when someone has an appointment in 24 hours or less. We grab that data from that Airtable database and then we send that JSON structure to the create call API and we basically just build that assistant that calls that person on the spot so we're not using an assistant ID which basically allows us to pass in that dynamic data so that the call is personalized.